All right, my name is Rafael, and I'll present a study we did that's called Modeling Bean Column Joints for Progressive Collapse Analysis. And to start with, we have uh, what a collapse, progressive collapse is. And basically, it is the failure of a localized member that pushes the adjoining members um, to fail as well, which may cause, uh, as in this picture, uh, the structural collapse, or at least a large portion of the collapse of the structure. So. Many events may trigger it, and uh, like fire, blast, uh, terrorist attacks, stuff like this. And the way to mitigate such um, catastrophic failure on the structure is to have alternative load path on the structure. So a common scenario of a, of a, of progressive collapse is the loss of a column. And in this scenario, uh, and here it's represented by uh, part of a reinforcing uh, concrete frame. Uh, here we will show only half. This is the column we have, that we would uh, theoretically lose, and that's why the apply load is in this column because all the the load on the top would push down in that location. So three reload resistant mechanisms would occur in this case. The first one is called the compressive arch uh, action, and this is called because uh, the load versus middle column displacement response of this frame would look like an arch. That's why it's called like this. Then it, we would have the plastic hinge uh, region, which happens due to the reinforcement yielding and the concrete crushing of the beam. And we see a loose on, of loading resistance on the frame, which will lead to the last um, load resistant mechanism, which is the catenary action, which happens due to the large displacements of the column, which starts to be actually tension, and we see a um, additional load capacity uh, of this uh, frame. So, in this scenario, the beam column joint is a critical um, element because it controls basically the deformations of the beams at the connections, which are concentrated at the connections, and is also critical in resisting and distributing the loads, which is applied on the lost column, which has to be uh, distributed to the existing elements. So, because of that, in this study, we will assess the existing state of the art of beam column joint modeling techniques using a previously tested reinforced concrete frame subjected to a progressive collapse studied by the loss of a column. We will also analyze the accuracy and capture the progressive collapse mechanisms, the three ones that I mentioned, the impacts on the structural behavior, and the ease and ease of use of each uh, beam column joint model, modeling um, theory. So, Two main factors um, on beam column joint behavior. The first one is the shear panel deformation, and the second one is the bond slip um, of the beam column joints due to the longitudinal rebars of the connecting beams. So to capture those um, re um, main mechanisms of the beam column joints, we have three widely adopted beam column joint models. They are the rigid joint model, the rotational hinge model, and the component model. The first one, the rigid joint model, is basically neglecting the beam column joint altogether. And uh, it basically uses rigid end elements, which shifts all the, the damage from the joint to the adjoining members, such as beam and columns. However, it, re it yields a reasonably accurate result if beam column joints is not a critical failure mechanism in your structure. So if beam column joints is not a failure mechanism, you can use this type of beam column joint modeling to model your structure and you should, should have a reasonably accurate result. Otherwise, it yields an unconservative strength of your structure. The second one is the rotational hinge model, which is basically the rigid um, model. However, it uses a spring or a hinge in the middle to account for the shear panel uh, constitutive model of the beam column joint. It is a simple model and it yields, again, reasonably accurate results if bonds slip, it's not a critical mechanism in the structure because it doesn't account for any type of bond slip behavior. The last one and the most realistic um, among the three we are talking about is the component model. Uh, it can simulate both shear panel and bond slip by using many different springs at all the faces of the beam column joint. However, because it uses so much uh, springs, it also needs a constitutive model for each of those springs, and those models are not very readily available or has enough or have enough um, documentation available, and sometimes it's quite hard to um, pick one up for your specific case. That's why this model, although more realistic, 
uh, it's not really uh, practical for use uh, in uh, real applications. So for that case, in this study, we will use the simple rotational hinge model due to its simplicity and also because in the frame that we will use for this study, bond slip is not a critical failure mechanism. So to simulate the shear panel constitutive model, we have basically a beam column joint that follows four uh, characteristic damage state points. The first one is the crack of the joint, then the yield of the joint, the maximum strength of the joint, and then the residual strength. And we will also account for the hysteretic um, response of the joint. Although we will not do a cyclic load, uh, we saw that between the compressive arch and the catenary reaction, the beam goes through uh, compression and tension. So in a sense, it's like uh, going through a load cycle. That's why we will consider the hysteretic response of this beam. And for this study, we used the parameters derived from John et al. to calculate the, the values of each of those hysteretic um, points. So the shear panel constitutive models that we will consider is five state-of-the-art models. They are listed here uh, by the name of the, the people who uh, study them. And before we go through the numerical modeling of the, those beam column joints, one thing to note is that like any constitutive model, these models were um, derived based on experimental data sets. So a lot of uh, numerical difference uh, can happen if the structure you analyze is not very similar to the ones that each of these um, constitutive models were derived with. So in this study, we we'll used uh, this frame that was experimentally tested by Liu et al. And here you can see, basic, it's basically a, a simple frame configuration. Here we're only showing half of it. We have uh, the rebar material properties, the cross sections of each section of this frame, and show here. And uh, the reported failure mode was the rupture of the longitudinal rebar on the bottom at the face to the center column. And although the beam column joint was not the critical failure mode in this situation, we can see by the correct structure that uh, it had high joint stress demand, which because of that, we will be able to have a sense of the impact of beam column joints on a progressive collapse analysis such as this one. So the numerical model was developed in open seas, used displacement-based frame elements. Uh, we used semi-rigid elements for the beam column joints the, the, the green ones, semi-rigid elements for the beam column joints, and also for the column and foundation um, intersection. And we also only model half of this uh, frame due to symmetry. So the beam column joint used zero length rotational hinge, is just how the, this hinge is called in open seas. Pinching four is also just the name in open seas. It's a material model element that accounts for the cyclic um, behavior of the um, beam column joint. So, like I said, the shear panel behavior of beam column joints is normally governed by four uh, characteristic points. And in this slide, we can see how each of the, the theories considered in this study uh, calculates each of those points. So we have a, a, a good variability on how they calculate each of those points, so we'll be able to see how those impact on the structural response. So jumping to the results and discussions, here on the right we can see uh, the experiment as, as black and also three of the numerical models. We chose to put only three models here because the, the two that are not here, they had um, response basically the same as the ones shown. So we just uh, kept the ones that we could visually differentiate. And what we can see from, the, from this graph is that all of the beam column joints uh, were able to capture those uh, load resistant mechanisms that I mentioned before, I, and I put it here on this graph. The compressive, compressive arch action, the plastic hinge, and the catenary action, we can see that all the models were able to capture that successfully. And also, all of them captured the correct failure mode, which was the rebar fracture on the bottom of the beam. So all the models were successful in capturing the correct failure and uh, structure behavior. And also, uh, we can see from the results that there is a low difference in the calculated response of all the models past the compressive arch region. So we can see from this point on, basically all the models behave the same. So we see that the beam column joints in those regions has 
have not a um, considerable impact on the frame. Uh, on the first region, the one that the beam column drawing presents the more uh, critical effects, we can see also on the graph on the right that the difference between the calculated response measured here by the peak load in this region with the different beam column drive models adopted, uh, it's not very expressive. We can see the maximum difference between 20 and 25, it's about 13%. So the beam column joints that we use, although have an impact in the first region, the compressive arch, uh, they don't have present a significantly um, different um, calculation between of them two, so we can pick one to say this one is better than the other or choose this or choose that. So in, the, in this study we couldn't uh, get to a conclusion or um, which, uh, which of the study being column drawing models are the best because the calculated difference was not considerably different. So with that in mind, jump into the conclusions. We have that first, expert knowledge from engineers to select a uh, appropriate beam column joint because, like I said, they are based on a, an experimental data set and if the frame you're studying is considerably different from what it should be, it can have a considerably different uh, numerical response. Also, even properly designed joint, which was the case for this frame, uh, have a significant effect on a structural response. Like we saw a 16% decrease in the peak load capacity by considering or not beam column joints. And uh, all beam column joints predicted the expected response, so both, all, of, all of the ones we studied could uh, be used for, for a reinforced concrete frame. The maximum difference between the, the models we considered were 13%. And in this study specifically, the Kim and Lafave model calculated the closest response of the frame to the experiment. And to finalize, beam column drive models did not have a significant impact on plastic hinge and catenary reaction region, which we believe is because those regions are mainly dominated by the highly deflected beam, and the beam column joint, for that reason, doesn't play as important a role um, as the, the beam itself. So with that in mind, uh, we'd like to thank you and open it up for questions.